everyone welcome to gemchem now today's video is on inorganic polymers part 6 and here we are going to deal with boron nitrogen compounds specifically borazine now here we are dealing with structure and preparation now before starting already five videos are uploaded in channel on inorganic polymers you can watch it i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video and if you are new to gemchem do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates now let us start. Now borazine is also known as inorganic benzene. Why is it so? Now if you focus into the electronic configuration of boron, carbon and nitrogen, you will see that boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1 and nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 and carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So if we add boron plus nitrogen, then we can get carbon plus carbon. So here if you can see here the number of electrons present in boron and nitrogen is similar to that of carbon and carbon. So borazine is like benzene and has a planar hexagonal structure which contains six membered ring in which boron and nitrogen are arranged alternatively. So they are similar to benzene. We will see structure and every details in order to understand this better. Now see, if carbon is undergoing the formation of benzene, then it has to hybridize, right? So 1s2, 2s2, 2p2 will be excited to give one of the electrons to the 2p orbital, right? So here the configuration becomes 1s2, 2s1 and 2p3. So ultimately we are having each every orbital containing one electron, right? Now if we try to hybridize, we will hybridize S, Px and Py and Pz will remain as it is. So we will get on hybridization 3 sp2 orbitals. Now if your concept on hybridization is not clear, you can watch videos on hybridization already uploaded in channel. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. Now see, if we try to draw the orbitals around the carbon, then we have a Pz orbital and 3 sp2 hybridized orbital and in case of benzene we can see that these p orbitals forms the pi bonds and these sp2 hybridized orbitals forms the sigma bonds here is a sigma bond with hydrogen and here carbon carbon sigma bond formation is done like this this is the mo diagram for benzene clear now we will see for boron and nitrogen so that borazine can be formed. Now remember in B3, N3, H6 basically borazine is our B3, N3, H6. Now in this B3, N3, H6 both nitrogen and boron are sp2 like Bz that is our benzene. So if we consider this one so boron here one of the electrons from 2s will jump into 2p to give us 2p2. So if we focus into the filling of the orbitals then this pz will remain empty and they will ultimately hybridize to give us 3 sp2 hybridized orbital and boron will have these orbitals around it. Now if we consider for nitrogen, nitrogen will be like this and one of the electrons from 2s2 will be jumped from here to here. Now for a correction this will be our boron star and this particular thing will be our nitrogen star. Okay. Now what will be now the electrons? Here will be two electrons and here will be one one electrons because one of the electrons from 2s has jumped into the pz orbital. When they hybridize, they will give sp2 hybridized orbital. Now, if you can see here, here is the two electrons present in pz orbital. Now, if we consider our borazine, it will look like this. Consider for borazine and benzene, then there is a difference, right? So, you can see here, each carbon has one electron to be formed for pi. Whereas, in case of borazine, there is only two electrons present over nitrogen. So you can understand that 
in B3, N3, H6, each nitrogen atom has a lone pair of electrons in it in the 2pz orbital, right? And the situation is identical with benzene. If one considers two carbon atoms instead of boron and nitrogen, only the difference being unlike benzene where each of the 2pz orbitals are containing one electron here. Boron provides the empty 2pz orbital for pi overlap in this case. Now, since B3N3H6 is isoelectronic as we have seen with benzene, both compounds have a pi electron density above the ring which we can see by green lines and as well as the below the rings. The difference with the benzene is that if you can see nitrogen center in this pi overlap is having greater share of electron density unlike complete delocalization which we can see in case of benzene and owing to this partial delocalization in borazine it responds to number of reactions where we can see individual characteristics of boron and nitrogen. Now if you can see here there is a retainment of aromatic stabilization in both of these but here extremely high stabilization occurs. And calculation indicates that there is a pi electron drift from nitrogen to boron. But that is less than in case of sigma electron drift from boron to nitrogen. Clear? And this also indicates that this bond that is boron nitrogen bond is a polar bond. And it can dissolve in different polar solvents. Because this is delta negative, this is delta positive. Due to this partial delocalization of pi electron cloud, this nitrogen retains some of its basicity and the boron atom has some acidity. Okay. And if you do not know about this concept of acidity and basicity, you can check out. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. So, one with excess of electrons can act as base whereas one with deficiency of electron can act as acid. Now in borazine, if you consider here the bond length which is the boron and nitrogen bond length is almost 1.44 angstrom whereas in case of benzene it is 1.42 angstrom. Clear? And this clearly indicates that borazine largely has benzene like characteristics and structure otherwise one should have been obtaining for normal boron nitrogen bonding then its bond length is 1.54 but here we are getting 1.44 whereas for boron double bond nitrogen it is 1.36. So these two values are not near to these ones so we can prove that it is like benzene. Now we will deal with the preparation of borazine and it involves lots of steps right. So we will see different methods. Now the first method which we are going to see is stock and Poland's method. Right, here we are going to see stock and Poland's method. Here we can use the ammonia and diborin. So first of all, if we put ammonia on diborin, then an initial adduct is formed which undergoes transformation and heating on a closed tube. Now remember what is diborin? Diborin is B2H6. This will react with ammonia to first form a adduct. Okay. So adduct will be B2H6 dot 2NH3. Now we need to balance this thing. So here comes our 3, here comes our 3 and here comes our 6, clear? Now it will undergo further heating at about 200 degrees Celsius to produce B3, N3, H6 plus 12 hydrogen. This is one of the method. But this method gives low yield of desired product owing to simultaneous formation of other various polymeric substance. Now what is the second method? Second method is that heating of 
BCl3 with NH4Cl. So we are using BCl3 and NH4Cl. Now BCl3 is heated with NH4Cl in chlorobenzene as solvent in presence of iron, nickel or cobalt at 140 degrees Celsius. Then we can get boron, 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 trichloroborazine produced. From that we treat it with LiLH4 in polyether to result in B3N386. So we will see the reaction right. So here we use 3NH4Cl plus 3BCl3. This in presence of chlorobenzene that is C6H5Cl and iron at about 140 degrees Celsius will produce 3 B3 N3 H3 Cl3. Now this will be reacted with lithium aluminium hydride to give us the reduced product. So ultimately we will get this one. See we will get 2 B3 N3 H6 plus 6 LiCl plus 3 B2 H6. Right. Now we will consider a slightly modified version of this particular method where we can perform it in one step. So another method is that it is a modified method where reaction of ammonium sulphate and NaBH4 occurs is we take 3 ammonium sulphate NH4 whole 2 SO4 plus 6 NaBH4 at about 140 to 160 degrees Celsius to form 2B3 N3 H6 plus other products that is 3 Na2 SO4 plus 18 hydrogen. And the last method we will consider is heating a mixture of LiBH4 and NH4Cl. So we are heating a mixture of LiBH4 and NH4Cl. When these two are heated to 230 degrees Celsius, borazine forms directly and the yield is up to 30 percent. So here 3 NH4Cl plus 3 LiBH4 produces at about 230 degrees Celsius B3 N3 H6 plus 3 LiCl plus 9 hydrogen and in this case our yield is near about 30 percent. So this was the last method of preparing borazine. Now in the next video we will deal with the preparation of substituted borazine physical properties. Okay. So hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.